this morning we are going to uh, go through a, a, a topic uh, obstacles to a victorious living. Aha, leo hii tutaangalia somo tutakalo liita vizuizi dhidi ya maisha ya ushindi. And I remember the last time I was here. Na nakumbuka uh, mwisho nilipokuwa hapa. Uh, I took us through uh, victorious living through insight. Ah uh, nikatuelezea kuhusu kuishi maisha ya ushindi kwa kuwa na kuona vyema. And we are seeing that the first thing we need to, uh, to, to get the revelation of the true knowledge of our God. And then to continually study and meditate on the word of God and devote to ourselves to prayer. And also understand and appreciate that it's God who opens doors. Doors that no man can shut. And that we need always to be uh, to decide to always make a move or exercise our faith. Na inapaswa kwamba tukatendeze kazi imani zetu ama tukafanya tunalostahili. And then finally running with our God-given vision. Na tukaona mwisho kwamba yatupasa kukimbia na maono tuliopewa na Mungu. So the word of God says that for them that in Christ. Na na Biblia ikasema kwamba kwa walio ndani ya Kristo they are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are expected to live a victorious life. But that is not always the case. Lakini mara nyingi siyo kawaida. We always have obstacles or bottlenecks on our way. Tunazo vizuizi vinavyo tuzuia kuishi maisha yale. But uh, because we are supposed to begin with faith. Kwa kuwa tupaswa kuanza kwa imani. Continue with faith. Tuzidi kwa imani. And then finish with faith. Na tumalizie kwa imani. Just as we have we, we have sung that song. Kama tulivyo imba ule wimbo. It should be our desire. Yapaswa kuwa shauku na tamaa yetu. That we finish well. Kwamba tutamaliza vyema. And even for those uh, who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. Na kwa wale ambao bado hawajamfahamu Yesu kama Bwana na Mwokozi. Today he's still in the business of saving his people. Leo bado yuko katika hali na shughuli ya kuokoa watu. But there is a time that is going to come to us as a judge. Lakini kuna wakati atakaporudi kama hakimu. So you still have an opportunity. Basi bado tunayo nafasi. So uh, so today is like uh, uh, I'm picking all, uh, from where I left. Ni kama kwamba naendelea kutoka nilipomalizia. That yes there is that victorious living. Ni kwamba kunayo maisha ya ushindi ama kuishi kwa ushindi. But we need to know that uh, uh, the, the, uh, faith, faith is a journey. Kwamba yapaswa tufahamu kwamba safari ya Kikristo ni ya imani ama imani ni safari. It's not an event. Aha sio tukio. And uh, we need to know also that we have a full time enemy. Na tupaswa kufahamu kwamba pia tunaye adui aliye daima. That whose oh, 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 who's, uh, work is to steal, to kill and to destroy. Mbaya kazi yake ni kuiba, kuangamiza na kuua. That but Jesus came. Lakini Yesu akaja. That we may have life and have it in abundance. Ili tuwe na na uzima na tuwe nao tele tele. So I'd like we read two opening scriptures and then I'll pick it from there. The first one is 1 Corinthians 16 verse 8 to 9. Tutasoma Wakorintho wa kwanza 16:8 hadi 9. And here is Paul who was saying but I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. Na Paulo anasema nitabaki pale Ephesus hadi Pentecost. For a great and effective door has been opened to me. Kwa kuwa mlango wa ulio wazi wa kuna mlango uliowekwa wazi mbele zangu. And there are many adversaries. Na kuna maadui wengi. So the adversaries can be those obstacles. Na adui ni wale ama vizuizi vile. Yes, God is the one who opens doors. Ni bungu ambaye ufungua milango. And he sets them before us. Na na iweka mbele zetu. But we know that there are many obstacles. Lakini tunajua kuna vizuizi vingi. Even we know that Daniel prayed. Tunajua kwamba hata Danieli akaomba. And the prayers were answered that very day. Na maombi yake yakajibiwa siku ile ile. But the answers were hijacked by the evil one. Lakini majibu yakatekwa na yule muovu. Until another angel was sent. Hadi maraika mwingine yakatumwa. And the answer came. Na ndipo sa maombi yakaja. So anything of value, basi kila kitu cha dhamana including opportunities need to be safeguarded or protected. Inabidi ikalindwe na ikazuiliwe. Otherwise you risk losing it. Ina uwezekano wa kuipoteza. Including your very salvation. Hata wokovu wako. And Matthew 24 verse 13. Na Matthew 24 mstari wa 13. Jesus said, Yesu akasema, But he who endures to the end, atakaye astahimili hadi mwisho. 
so uh, shall be saved yeye ndiye atakayeokolewa and this morning in the first service here na katika ibada ya kwanza hapa pastor dan karioki mchungaji dan karioki was ministering on the word alikuwa na hudumu kwenye neno that occupying till occupy till i come akasema dumuni hadi nitakaporejea so we need to know that there is an, an open door for you as an individual basi inapaswa ufahamu kwamba kuna mlango kwako ulio wazi kama mtu binafsi you as a family wewe kama familia for us even as this ekz sisi hata kama kanisa la ukombozi but there are many adversaries lakini kunao maadui wengi and i would like to speak on four of them the four obstacles na ningetaka kuzungumzia kuhusu vizuizi vile vinne and the first one uh, i know we will read a few a, a number of scriptures na katika ya kwanza tutasoma vifungu kadhaa vya maana and i know that god is going to bless us najua kwamba bwana atatubariki uh, the first obstacle kizuizi cha kwanza of living a victorious life ya kuzuia kuishi maisha ya ushindi is entertaining sin mhm ile ya kustahimili dhambi and sin is a device that the evil one uses na dhambi ni chombo ambacho wadui utumia and uh, we need to know that when we sin tunapaswa kufahamu kwamba tunapofanya dhambi th- then we give the evil one a legal ground ni kwamba tunampa sehemu ya miriki ya yule muovu and because it's the accuser of brethren na kwa sababu yeye ndiye huwashtumu watakatifu then there is a reason that we cannot be able to move forward ah kunayo sababu basi hatuwezi songa mbele and in isaiah 59 verse 1 to 2 isaiah 59 mtisa mstari wa kwanza na wa pili the word of god says biblia inasema behold the lord's hand is not shortened tazama mkono wa bwana si mfupi that it cannot save kwamba hauwezi okoa no his ear a heavy kwamba ala masikio yake mazito that it cannot hear kwamba hayawezi sikia but your iniquities lakini maovu yenu have separated you from your god nimewatenga kutoka kwa mungu wenu your sins have hidden his face from you dhambi zenu zimewatenga uso wake kutoka kwenu so that you will not hear kwamba hawezi sikia and even the psalm is uh, in psalm 66 verse 18 to 19 na katika zaburi 66 mstari wa 18 hadi 19 and the psalmist was saying uh, mwandishi wa zaburi asema that if i had cherished sin in my heart kama ningeiweka dhambi moyoni mwangu the lord would not have listened bwana hangenisikia but verse 19 lakini mstari wa 19 uh, uh, says that the, uh, 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 but but god has surely listened lakini mungu hakika amesikia and has heard my prayer na amesikia ombi langu so there is a spiritual truth that we can be able to pick from this aha kuna ukweli wa kiroho tunaweza upokea kutoka kwa haya that if there is something that can hinder even our prayers to be uh, to be heard kwamba kama kuna jambo la kuzuia maombi yetu kusikika is any is, is entertaining scene in our lives ni kule kuweza kustahimili dhambi ndani ya maisha yetu and one of the things that you keep us from sinning na jambo moja litakalo tutenga na dhambi is desiring that the word of god is going to grow in us rich Ni, ni kutamani kwamba neno la Bwana litakuwa ndani yetu kwa wingi and that's why the psalmist in Psalms 119 verse 11 and ipoza katika Zaburi 119 mstari wa 19 he said that your word i have hidden in my heart anasema kwamba neno lako nimerificha moyoni mwangu that i might not sin against you ili nisikutende dhambi so since sin destroys basi dhambi huangamiza And the first thing it does it starts with the mind. Na cha kwanza inachofanya ni kuanza na mawazo yako. Because the evil one kwa sababu yule muovu is called the, the god of this age. Anaitwa Mungu wa kizazi hiki. And he bra- and is one who blinds the, the, the mind of people. Na yeye huwa anapumbaza mawazo ya mwanadamu. And that's what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 to 4. And ipo hivyo inavyosema katika Wakorintho wa pili inne a uh, inne mbili na hati tatu but, but even if our gospel is veiled na hata ingawa injiri yetu imezibwa it is veiled to those who are perishing aha imefunikwa kwa wanaoangamia whose minds the god of this age has blinded ambao mawazo ya watu wa kizazi hiki yamefunikwa naye who do not believe ambao hawaamini rest the right of the gospel ili mwanga wa ya manuru ya injiri of the glory of christ ya utukufu wa kristo who is the image of god ambaye ni mfano wake mungu should shine on them uweze kuangaa juu yao so every time we sin basi kila tunapofanya dhambi 
something in us dies ah kuna jambo ndani yetu kinachokufa ama kitu ndani yetu kinachokufa and this backed by ezekiel chapter uh, chapter 18 verse 4 ezekiel chapter katika ezekiel 18 verse 4 mstari wake wa 4 And the word of God says that behold all souls are mine. Na Biblia inasema tazama nafsi zote ni zangu. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. Nafsi ya baba na ya mwana zote ni zangu. The soul who who sins shall die. Na nafsi ifanyayo dhambi hakika itakufa. So so every time we sin ah kila basi tufanyapo dhambi something in us dies. Aha kuna kitu ndani yetu kinacho angamia makufa we should be men and women who hate sin tunapaswa kuwa wanadada wanaume wanaochukia dhambi every time the israelites sinned kila wakati wana wa israeli walipofanya dhambi something in them died ah kuna kitu ndani yao kilichokufa and there is an example that we are going to see uh, in numbers na mfano wake ni katika kitabu cha hesabu And here there are, there, are, there are several times na hapa kuna mara kadha so when 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 the when the israelites were moved moved from egypt and they were going to the promised land kila wakati wana israeli walitoka katika uh, wakienda nchi ya hadi they encountered uh, 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 those those countries were already, already those lands were already occupied kuna zile nchi ambazo zilikuwa zimemilikiwa tayari and uh, it reached somewhere ikafika muda basi that the king of moab kwamba mfalme wa moabi knew that uh, they were now approaching his land alifahamu kwamba wanakaribia nchi yake and because he had had the terror that they had done to the amorites na kwa sababu alisikia mambo waliyotenda kwa moabi Uh, so so he was trembling and everyone there was trembling na basi akawa na hofu nyingi and he he, he, he hired na basi akaweza kutafuta watu Uh, the, uh, he had pro- pro- prophet uh, Baram akamtafuta nabii Baram that he may curse the Israelites ili aweze kuwalaani wana wa Israeli but god could not allow the israelites to be uh, to be cast lakini mungu hangeruhusu wana wa israeli waraaniwe and he said that these are blessed na akasema hawa ni wabarikiwa and even when he allowed the prophet uh, 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 the prophet even to go to to, uh, to go uh, though he had warned him not to go hata alipomruhusu yule nabii aende kinyume cha mashauri yake even when he tried to prophesy he only told him only prophesy what i tell you hata alipojaribu kuna kutoa unabii akamwambia nabii ama toa unabii kadri nilivyokueleza but the hedge of protection that was around the israelites lakini ile ulinzi uliokuwa juu ya wana wa israeli was only broken when, when they sinned aha iliweza kuvunjwa baada tu ya kufanya dhambi kwao and we briefly see that in let's see numbers 22 verse 1 and 2 katika them just to get the context hesabu 22 mstari wa kwanza na wa pili numbers So numbers uh, 1 to then verse 5 to 6 and verse 12 says Barak king of Moab was afraid after he saw all the Israel had done to the Amorites and he had prophet Baram to cast them verse 12 of and he, and God said to Baram you shall not go with them you shall not cast the, peop- the, the people for they are breast this God who was declaring that they were breast people who ni Mungu aliyekuwa nakiri kwamba hawa ni watu wabarikiwa And in your own time you will be able to look at numbers 23 the entire chapter and 24 na ukatazama kwa wakati wako hesabu 23 na 24 where baram prophesied four times but instead of cursing the israelites he blessed them mahali ambapo baram alitoa unabii mara nne lakini kadri ya kuwalaani akawabariki but let's see numbers 25 where now they sinned na na tuone 25 mahali basi walipofanya dhambi and says that while, while Israel was uh, staying in Shittim yep. the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with the Moab women who invited them to the uh, uh, to the sacrifices to their god the people ate the sacrificial meal and bowed down before the gods so Israel yoked themselves to Baal and the Lord's anger burnt against them uh, burnt against them then let's go to verse 9 and 10 of the same mstali wa 9 but those who died in the plague uh, number 24000 the lord said to moses afinaha uh, son of uh, eriaza the son of arun the priest has turned away my anger away from the israelites since he was zealous for my honor among them as i am i did not put a, 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 i did not put an end to them in my zeal 
So here we have seen that yes God had declared that the Israelites were blessed people. Hapa Bwana alikuwa ametangaza kwamba wana Israeli ni wabarikiwa. And they could not be cast. Na kwamba hawangeweza laaniwa. But they opened a door. Lakini wao walifungua mlango. When they, commi- they, they committed sin or uh, they, they indulged the men indulged in sexual immorality with the Moab women. Kati wanaume walijiingiza katika usinzi na wanawake wa Moabi. And they sacrificed to their gods. Na wakaweza kutoa zadaka kwa miungu wao. So there is a hedge that is around us. Kunayo basi ua ambalo Bwana ametuwekea. We may not be able to see it. Yawezekana tusione ua ule. But there is that hedge. Lakini kuna ua la ulinzi. But it is usually broken when we sin. Lakini inavunjika tu tunapofanya dhambi. No wonder God himself gave a testimony in Job 1 verse 9. Na ndiposa Bwana akatoa ushuhuda katika ya Ayubu 1:39. So when the Nani. devil had had come when the, when the angels were, were, going, were going to God. Wakati maraika waliko walipokuwa naenda kwake Mungu. And he told uh, the, uh, God asked the devil have you, uh, uh, have you considered my servant uh, Job who is brimless? Na Mungu akamwambia shetani je umemwona mtakatifu wangu Ayubu? But they they one has made a very profound statement. Lakini yule muovu akatoa usemi mzito that have you, that is in job 1 verse 9 that have you not put a hedge around him si kwamba umemwekea ulinzi yeah we can read verse, uh, does job fear god for nothing satan replied ah si ayubu anamhofu bungu kwa utupu have you not put a hedge around him si kwa umemwekea ulinzi and his household na nyumba yake and everything he has na kila alicho nacho You have blessed the work of his hands. Umebariki kazi ya mikono yake. That his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. Kwamba mivugo yake wametawanyika kila mahali. So it's important to know that if you are walking right with God. Na ni muhimu basi kufahamu kama unatembea na utaua mbele za Mungu. There is a hedge of the wall of the fire that is around you. Kunao ulinzi ama moto unaokulinda. But that hedge you can break it when you sin. Lakini ule ulinzi unaweza uvunja unapofanya dhambi. You sin and fail to confess and repent. Unapofanya dhambi na usikiri na kutubu zile dhambi. That's why this obstacle we said it entertaining sin. Na ndiposa tukasema hiki kizuizi ni kile cha kuweka dhambi. Yeah so you are entertaining it so, uh, so so whatever you are doing kwamba unafurahia dhambi basi kwa kila unachofanya. And we have two other bad examples in the Bible. Na tuna mifano mingine miwili katika Biblia. We said when you you sin something dies. Ah tukasema kwamba unapofanya dhambi kuna kitu kinachoangamia. And I'll just give two examples of priest Eli and uh, the, the one for for Saul. Tunaona mifano miwili ya Eli na Sauli. So so for for priest Eli we'll just read a, a scripture and that is 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 29 and 30. Tutasoma tukifungu tumuone mm, Mm-hmm. Kuhani uh, and this what the word of God says why do you uh, why do you kick at my sacrifice and offering with which I have commanded in my dwelling place and honor your sons than me so Eli was honoring his sons more than God because he was told what they were doing but instead of warning them Eli. yeah, uh, yeah uh, he, 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 he did not do it with authority so it's like he was honoring his sons more than god heli hakuwakanya wanawe hata walipoenda kinyume chake mungu to make yourself fat with the best of all the offerings of israel my people kwa sababu walila nyama nono kinyume cha wana wake wa israeli but we can see a sad situation in verse 30 tunaona hali mbaya ama tukio mbaya katika mstari wa 30 that therefore the lord god of israel says na basi mungu wa israeli asema i said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever nilikuwa nimeahidi kwamba nyumba yako na baba yako utatembea mbele zangu milele So so we can see a very powerful statement that was there that they had been uh, god had, had committed uh, tunaona kwamba bwana alikuwa ameahidi but sin crept in lakini dhambi ikaingia kati and the big part we are going to see the consequence of that sin na tunaona katika sehemu ya pili matokeo ya ile dhambi that, 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 that declaration that promise was revoked kwamba ile ahadi ambayo bwana alipeana akaikana ama akaiondoa and that verse bit says but now the lord says na hapa basi bwana yasema far be it from me na iwe mbali nami For those who honor me kwa kuwa watakao ni heshimu I'll honor nitawaheshimu and those who despise me na watakao ni dunisha shall be rightly esteemed nao hawatatukuzwa so those are consequences of sin hao ni matokeo 
ya dhambi and another bad example is uh, king Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 13 to 14. Mfano mwingine ni wa mfalme Sauli katika wa Samuel wa kwanza 13 13 hadi 14. And this is where he sacrificed and we know that one was only uh, put aside for the priests. Na alipotenda tendo lililokuwa tu la kuhani. So uh, uh, here, here it says and Samuel said to Saul. Na basi hapa Samuel akamwambia Sauli. You have done foolishly. Umefanya kiujinga. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God. Umewe hujaweka maagizo ya Bwana Mungu wako. Which he commanded you. Aliyo kuamuru. For now the Lord would, would would have would have established your kingdom of Israel forever. So in that verse 13 uh, yeah turudi hapo yeah yeah endelea uh, Aha. Uh-huh. Kwa kuwa ahadi sasa Bwana angekuwa ameimarisha ufalme wako milele. Yeah you see again here there was this promise. Hapa bado kunaye ahadi. That God had intended to establish. Kwamba Bwana alikuwa ameahidi kuimarisha uh, Saul and his family uh, uh, his kingdom to be in Israel forever. Kwamba ufalme wake Sauli ungekuwa Israeli milele. So let's see verse 14. Tuone mstari wa 14. But now your kingdom shall not continue. Lakini sasa ufalme wako hautaendelea. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Bwana amejitafutia mtu moyo wake unamfuatia. The Lord has commanded him to be commander of his people. Bwana amemwamuru kuwa kamanda wa jeshi lake. For you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Kwa kuwa hujaweka ambacho Bwana aliahidi. And uh, many many at times na mara nyingi basi We like quoting 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Tunaka ka nukuu wa mambo ya nyakati 7 mstari wa 14 hadi 17. That if my people kwamba iwapo watu wangu who are called by my name walioitwa kwa jina langu will humble themselves watajinyenyekeza mbele zangu and pray and seek my face na waombe na watafute uso wangu and turn from their wicked ways na wageuke katika njia zao mbovu Then I will hear from heaven. Basi nitasikia kutoka mbinguni. And we forgive their sins and heal their land. Na nitawasamehe dhambi zao na niponye ardhi yao. But we fail to read verse 13. Lakini tunakosea kwa kutosoma mstari wa 13. So this was during the dedication of the temple. Let's see verse 13. Ilikuwa katika siku za kuweza kutaiua kuliweka wakufu kanisa. That because of sin. Kwa sababu ya dhambi So here here there was this declaration that when I shut up heaven kuna ili tangazo kwamba nitakapofunga bingu and there is no rain na hamtakuwa na mvua or or command the rockers to devour the land ama ni watume zige wale na uh, uh, kinachokuwa or send pestilence among my people ama nitume tauni juu ya watu wangu and that's why, why now verse 14 comes in na hilo mstari wa 14 ni kama jibu ya mstari wa 13 and here is like we are given a spiritual truth ni kama tunapewa ukweli wa kiroho yes that we may fall into sin kwamba tunawezekana inawezekana tuingie kwenye dhambi but we, we are expected to humble ourselves tunapaswa kujinyenyekeza and pray and seek the face of god na tuombe na tutafute uso wake bwana and turn from our wicked ways na tugeuke kutoka njia zetu mbovu so we are not talking about entertaining sin ha, hatuzungumzi kuhusu kufurahia dhambi but is turning away from our, our wicked ways lakini inabidi tugeuke kutoka njia zetu mbaya and in your own time you read Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 11 na katika wakati wako usome mambo ya nyakati and there are promises that were promised there tatu. na kuna ahadi nyingi pale Deuteronomy 11 uh, kumbu kumbu, mambo ya kumbukumbu na torati there were promises that were again promised there uh, kuna ahadi nyingi zimo pale but again in verse 16 and 17 lakini mstari wa 16 na 17 god was declaring if they fail to love and to obey him na uh, matakapo kataa kuniheshimu na kunipenda that the heaven will be shut kwamba bingu itafungwa uh, uh, and there will be no rain na hamtakuwa na mvua That's when there is sin in your life. Wakati kuna dhambi maishani mwako. Even when you pray, hata ingawa utaomba. That is like your prayers are hitting the ceiling. Ni kama kwamba maombi yako yanagonga mwamba ama ndadali. Yes, you can go and pray but like unasikia hapa sipenyi. Mhm. So there is no breakthrough. Hakuna upisho. And that's why uh, even in the Lord's prayer. Na ndipo sasa katika hata ombi la baba yetu. Uh, 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 encourages us to confess of our sins. Inatutia moyo tukiri dhambi zetu. 
but we have good examples lakini tuna mifano miema we may not dwell on them yawezekana tusizingatie sana but we know of david uh, of daniel lakini tunafahamu danieli so even he did not worship uh, the idols hakuabudu miungu wa sanamu also the three Hebrew boys hata wale vijana watatu wa kiibirania meshach shadrach and abednego meshach shadrach na abednego they did not defile themselves hawakujiweka na jisi and god was with them na bwana akawa pamoja nao and even daniel when he was set, thought to be thrown in, in the in, in the uh, in the in the lion's den na hata daniel alipowekwa kwenye satundu la simba he did not denounce god hakumkana mungu and also david he sinned na pia david david daudi he sinned and committed adultery alifanya dhambi ya kiusinzi and even murdered na hata akaua but he was someone who who was broken and uh, broken and confessed and repented his lakini sins lakini ni mtu aliyekiri aliyevunjika na kukiri dhambi zake and that's why most of us uh, write reading psalms 51 na ndipo za wengi wetu tunafurahia kusoma zaburi 51 and finally the good example is the one, the story of J- joseph na mfano mwingine mwema ni yule wa yusuf that he ran away from the potiphar's uh, uh, wife kwamba alikimbia kutoka kwa mke wake potifa So if he could not have done that kama hangelifanya hayo maybe he could not have become the prime minister pengine hangekuwa waziri mkuu the final scripture in this niliwaambia ya kwanza itakuwa na nyingi so but i i hope you have gotten uh, uh, the, uh, what i wanted to bring for the, about the aspect of entertaining scene and the sequence tumai kwamba mmefahamu njia ya kuto furahia dhambi so let's look at hebrews 6 verse 11 to 12 in the amplified version tazama 11:6 Uh, uh, yeah and we desire for each one of you na tamaa ama shauku yetu juu ya kila mmoja wenu is to show to show the same diligence ni kwamba mkatie ama mkaonyesha bidii ile ile all, uh, all the way through aha uh-huh. katika hali yote ama katika njia nzima so so as to realize and enjoy full assurance of hope until the end ili mtambue na mfurahie uhakika wa ukamilifu so that you will not be spiritually sluggish ili msilemewe ama msiwe wale msilemewe katika safari yenu ya kiroho but you will instead be lakini mwe imara uh, instead be imitators am um, tuige of those who through faith uh, wale ambao kupitia imani rely on god with absolute trust wanaomtegemea mungu kwa tumaini la kweli and confidence in him na ujasiri ndani yake and in his power na katika nguvu zake and by patience and endurance na katika zubira na uvumilivu even when suffering hata kwa mateso are now inheriting the promises wao wanaridhi ahadi zake So 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 this an encourages an encouragement to us that there are many we are surrounded by a crowd of witnesses. Ah uh, ina tutia moyo kwamba tumezingirwa na mashahidi wengi. So we should not give up. Basi hatupaswi kukata tamaa. So the first obstacle kwamba kizuizi cha kwanza is entertaining sin. Ni kile cha kufurahia dhambi. Obstacle number two kizuizi cha pili is accepting the status quo in our lives. Ni kile cha kukubali hali tu tulio katika maisha. We should uh, 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 brothers and sisters we should not be satisfied with the second best. Aha uh-huh. wapendwa hatupaswi kuwa tumetoshereka na cha pili kilicho bora. God is God of progress. Ah uh, Mungu ni Mungu anayetusongesha ama kutoa kiwango kimoja hadi kingine. His, he, he changes not. Yeye yeah, habadiliki but he specializes in lifting us from one level of glory to another. Lakini yeye ni shujaa katika kututoa sehemu moja hadi nyingine. Uh, and uh, and i love uh, today uh, uh, those two songs of uh, william irima were in my mind na leo napendezwa na hizo nyimbo mbili ambazo zimekuwa kwa mawazo yangu what we have just sung ambayo tumeimba tu and the song that says that he he is your daughter yangu aha mm hapa nilipo mm-hmm. eh? mm-hmm. na navuka na, na, na ngambo ingine mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so we should desire eh? basi yapaswa tutamani to move to that uh, new level tuweze kuingia katika kiwango hicho kingine and i would like today to give you a testimony maybe i don't know if i have given in the past na sijui shuhuda ninayotaka kutoa yawezekana nimeitoa pale mbeleni uh, myself when i finished college nilipomaliza chuo i went and did mechanical engineering nilienda katika uta fiti wa mechanical engineering at machakos technical training institute which is now machakos university ambacho ni pale chuo cha utafiti i was doing the production option nilikuwa na ile ya kuweza kujumlisha ama kutoa vitu 
and I was very blessed that uh, after I cleared college na baada ya kumaliza masomo I was able to get a job with a multinational that is British American Tobacco nikaweza kupata kazi na British American Tobacco and uh, 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 and then after that na baada hayo uh, I moved to another multinational which is Unilever by then it was East Africa Industries nikaenda katika Unilever and uh, when well, I was there I was doing mechanical engineering na bado nikiwa pale nilikuwa katika engineering and uh, in in BAT I was among the people who introduced the third shift uh, the third shift na pale katika BAT ni katika uh, kawa katika awamu ya tatu tunikuwa nafanya kazi ile ile awamu ya tatu ile ya kulala usiku mhm so tulikuwa tunasema kulala na viatu uh-huh. <laughs> working night shift kulala na viatu mhm and even when i went to unilever that's continued na nilipoenda unilever bado hiyo ikaendelea and i was i saw it as if i was mark timing ah na nikaona ni kwamba nilikuwa nimedumu tu mahali pamoja and i saw that if i went back to do uh, in, in kenya poly to do her national diploma na nikaona kama ningeenda nifanye diploma ya hali ya juu i would be forced to leave the uh, work ah inge ni lazimu niache kazi but i was tired with the status quo lakini nilikuwa nimechoshwa na hali tu ya kuwa mahali nilipo i started doing accounts nikaanza kusomea uhasibu and uh, sometimes i could uh, I, i could work uh, wakati mwingine ningefanya kazi the class is supposed to begin at 5:30 ah uh, darasa lilikuwa lianze saa 11:30 but i was supposed to hand over at 6 lakini ilipaswa nitoke kazini saa 12 and then go to taveta uh, uh, near odion na niende hadi pale taveta ren karibu na chumba nyumba ya odion because i was in vision institute of professionals kwa sababu nilikuwa katika chuo cha in uh, visions and then there were some times that there was the, the, the reason that i wanted was not there it was in paramount plaza ya group cinema na wakati mwingine somo nililokuwa nachukua halingekuwa pale ningekuwa pale Paramount but Plaza. I was determined lakini nilikuwa nimejizasatiti I could go to the class when I'm almost one hour or one and hour and have read niliingia darasani nikiwa risali moja kuchelewa sweating but I was determined lakini nikishwa natokwa na josho uh, jasho lakini nilikuwa nimeamua and because i have got good people skills na kwa sababu nina hali nzuri ya kuambatanisha kupatanisha watu i could be able to get notes ningepata uh, noti ama even, masomo even sometimes going home i go somewhere and do photocopies of the, uh, 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 photocopies wakati mwingine hata nikienda nyumbani na beba zile noti na piga chapa sometimes i could get uh, 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 for, i come out from job in the morning on saturday morning wakati mwingine ningetoka kazini jumamosi asubuhi Uh, at 7 uh, moja asubuhi and we have a class full day on saturday na tuna darasa siku nzima jumamosi but god's grace was sufficient lakini neema ya bwana ikanitosha you could find sometimes those people who had slept in their own home and they are not doing anything else aha uh-huh. ungepata walio lala kwao na hawana lolote lingine they were dozing wanasinzia but i was a rat lakini mimi nilikuwa macho I, and I could be able to show them what is uh, where they have missed. Kwamba ningewaonyesha hata walipokosa. And by the grace of God I was able to get a CPK. Na kwa neema ya Bwana nikapata funzo ama kufusu katika CPK. And then got a Bcom. Na nikapata Bcom baadaye. And now since uh, 2006 I've been working as a finance professional. Na kutoka mwaka wa 2006 na sita nimekuwa nikifanya kazi ya uhasibu. Because I was tired of the status quo. Kwa sababu nilichoshwa na hali ile ya kubaki nilipo. And I'd like us to see Deuteronomy 2 verse 1 and 3. Na ningetaka tuone mambo ya nyakati mbili. Where we could see that even God himself Na mahali tunapoona kwamba hata Mungu mwenyewe looked at the situation of the Israelites Alitazama hali ya wana wa Israeli Remember they were supposed to go uh, 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 for 40 days but they spent 40 years Kumbuka walipaswa kutembea kwa siku 40 wakakaa miaka uh, 40 but they were going round a certain mountain Lakini walikuwa wanazunguka ule mlima mmoja tu Uh, let's see this uh, uh, then we turn uh, that is Deuteronomy 2:13 then we turned back and set out toward the wilderness along the route to the red sea as the lord had directed me for a long time we made our way around the hill country of sin then the lord said to me that is to moses you have made your way around this hill country wrong enough now turn north So I don't know which mountain you have gone through 
around all, all those times sijui ni mlima gani ambao umeuzunguka wakati huu wote but as god told the israelites na kama bwana alivyoita wana wa israeli he desires you to progress anatamani ukasonge mbele even in that situation god desired them to uh, uh, to advance and he told them even where to pass and what they were supposed to do hata pale bwana alitamani wasonge mbele kwa kuambilia njia utakayopita na la kufanya The same situation for the Israelites was in Exodus 14:13 to 16. Ikawa vile vile katika kutoka 13. And uh, uh, the, uh, 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 Exodus 14:13 uh-huh. to 16. Aha kutoka 14 13 hadi 16. And the word of God says and Moses said to the people. Na Musa akawaambia watu Do not be afraid. Usiogope. Stand still. Simame imara. And you see the salvation of the Lord. Na mtaona wokovu wake Bwana. Which he will accomplish for you today. Ambaye atadhibitisha kwenu leo. For the Egyptians you see today. Kwa kuwa wa Misri mnaoaona leo. You shall see uh, see again no more forever. Hamtawaona tena milele. And the Lord will fight for you. Na Bwana atawapigania. And will hold your peace. Na atawapa amani. And the Lord said to Moses. Na Bwana akasema kwa Musa, Why do you cry to me? Kwa nini mnanililia? Tell the, uh, the children of Israel to go forward. Niambia wana wa Israeli msonge mbele. But lift up your rod. Lakini inua fimbo lako. And stretch forth your hand over the sea. Na unyoshe mkono wako juu ya uh, bahari. And divide it. Na uweze kulitawanya. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground. Na wana wa Israeli mtapita nchi kavu through the midst of the sea katikati ya bahari so we have seen in that verse 15 tunaona katika huo mstari wa 15 that god commanded that the israelites move, go forward aha bwana akaamuru wana wa israeli wasonge mbele so in this situation in, in their situation katika hali yao basi before them was the red sea mbele yao kuna bahari ya shamu Behind them was Pharaoh and the army. Ah nyuma yao kukawa Pharaoh na jeshi lake. But even in that situation, lakini hata katika ile hali, God God uh, commanded that they go forward. Bwana akawaamuru wasonge mbele. It was a command to advance. Ilikuwa ni amri ya kusonga mbele. It was a call to obedience. Ilikuwa ni wito wa kutii and it was a challenge of faith na ilikuwa ni changamoto ya imani that in we may be, be in situations whereby yawezekana uko katika hali ambapo we don't know what to do haujui la kufanya but we can let go and let god lakini unaweza achilia ili umpe mungu nafasi that god will hold your hand kwamba bwana akakushike mkono and that lord god is going to give you victory na kwamba bwana atakupa ushindi we also know about the, the story of the four lepers in second kings chapter 7 tunajua kuhusu wale wakoma watatu katika Uh, wafalme wa kwanza they say that if we stay here wakasema iwapo tutabaki hapa is, is we are going to die tutakufa hapa but if we go lakini iwapo tutaondoka maybe the lord is going to help us yawezekana bwana atatusaidia and god we know that he amplified their steps na bwana akaweza kufanya zaidi ama kupanua makanyangio yao and their steps were like a, a huge army which was coming na ikawa kwamba sauti ya kukanyanga kwa ikawa kama jeshi kuri linalokuja and we know that theirs was a success story na tunajua kwamba yao ikawa ni ushindi mkubwa and f- uh, the final example we know about the men na ya mwisho tukafahamu kuhusu wanaume who had carried the paralytic waliokuwa waliombeba mtu aliyepoza and uh, uh, that is in mark 2 katika ma, mariko mbili as they carried him they found that where jesus was was full of packs na walipombeba wakagundua mahali yesu alipokuwa palikuwa pamejaa watu and they removed some iron sheets on the roof na wakatoa paa kwa nyumba and they dropped that man na wakamshusha chini yule mtu and jesus said na yesu akasema that your faith has made you whole kwamba imani yenu imewafanya uh, imewaponya so even those men you know that they were not comfortable with the status quo uh, tunafahamu hata hao wanaume hawakuwa wanatoshereka na hali waliokuwa na there is always room for improvement kunayo nafasi ya kufanya bora zaidi and you know the greatest room we have is a room for improvement tunafahamu kwamba nafasi tuliyonayo kubwa zaidi ni ile ya ku endelea because our god is a progressive god kwa sababu mungu wetu ni mungu anayeendeleza mambo and our attitude should be na hali yetu ya nia ya paswa kuwa it should it shouldn't matter where we are today haipaswi kuwa inajarisha tulipo leo because the best is yet to come kwa sababu iliyo bora bado haijaja 
So that is something that you can be confessing that, that declaring because God is with you. Ni hilo ni jambo la kukiri kwa sababu Bwana yunawe. In your life and in your situation. Katika maisha yako na hali yako. That the best is is yet to come. Kwamba kilicho bora bado. Life, rack, uh, when life lacks progress. Ah wakati maisha yana kusonga mbele. It becomes boring. Inawa haipendezi. We have seen those uh, military parades. Ah uh, tumeona paredi za ki uh, jeshi but we see there are sometimes that the soldiers mark time. Tunaona kuna wakati ambapo bado wana mark time wako mahali pamoja. But we see they usually get the command. Lakini kila wanapopata amri to move forward. Wasonge mbele. And even for us that should be the command. Na hiyo basi ni pia kwetu tusonge. Because we are not around that God because God is with us. Ah kwa kuwa hatupo peke yetu kwa sababu Bwana yunasi. Yes God is going to give us victory. Bwana atatupa ushindi. The third one, the third obstacle ya kizuizi cha tatu is the trap of fast failures. Trap of fast failures. Ule, ule mtego wa kushindwa pale mbeleni. Amba kuanguka ama kushindwa mbeleni trap of past failures um tego wa kutege kutegwa na uliyopitia awali so the word of god in psalm 68 verse 19 ah zaburi 68 mstari wa 18 ah declares that blessed be the lord ah yatangaza kubarikiwa ni bwana who rods us with benefits anayetupa faida kila siku and we can see that word is who daily anayetupa daily kila siku Who daily rods us with Anaya benefits? Anayetupa kila siku faida. The God of our salvation. Mungu wa wokovu wetu. And I would like you to visualize. I know most of you we have seen uh, those lorries which which carry the the quarry chips for constructing roads. Ah nime uhakika kwamba tumeona magari yanaombeba mchongo katika mahali pa ujenzi. Those lorries when now the caterpillar is able to put the, the road in them. Wakati uh, wanaoekeza wanaweka ndani inakuanga ni kama kamulima. Mm-hmm. That's like what God does for us daily. Ah, hiyo ndio Bwana anatufanyia kila siku kwamba kila siku he, uh, he rods us with daily blessings. Anatupa baraka za kila siku. That's why we should not dwell on our past failures. Na ndipo sababu hatupasi kudumu katika kushindwa kwetu kwa awali. Those are irreparable damage. Ah, mambo ambayo hatuwezi rejesha. God is God of a second chance. Bwana ni Mungu wa nafasi ya pili. He remains at work in our lives. Anabaki ka, kutenda kazi maishani mwetu. No wonder God was uh, telling the Israelites in Isaiah 43 verse 18 to, uh, to 19. Na ndipo sababu Bwana anasema katika Isaiah 43:18 That forget the former things. Pamba tusahau yaliyopita. Do not dwell on the past. Usibaki kwa yaliyopita. See I'm doing a new thing. Tazama nafanya jambo jipya. It springs up. Ela inatu inachochepua ama kutokeza. Do you not perceive it? Je, hamuitambui ama uioni? I'm making a way. Ninafanya njia in the wilderness. Ah nyikani. And streams in the wasteland. Na mito katika mahali tembarale. So even that is the same cha, uh, uh, the same cha, uh, 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 the command that God is, is reminding us. Ah hiyo ndio amri bado Bwana anatukumbusha asubuhi ya leo. That we should forget the former things. Kwamba tusahau yaliyopita. We should not dwell on the past. Tusibaki katika ya kale. Because he's doing a new thing. Kwa sababu afanya jambo jipya. Because he's daily rewarding us with benefits. Kwa sababu kila siku atupa faida. Even for the Israelites they were getting manna for each day. Hata kwa na Waisraeli kila siku walipata maana chakula cha kila siku. The past is dead. Ah uh, iliyopita imeshakufa. It cannot be resurrected. Haiwezi fufuliwa. Let it remain there in the grave. Hebu ibaki kwenye kaburi. Our God remains the great I am. Ah uh, Mungu wetu anabaki niliye mkuu. God the creator. Mungu muumbaji. And when we talk about God the creator, is God who can make something out of nothing. Ni Mungu awezaye kuumba kitu kutokana na utupu. But you and me require something to come up with something. Na lakini mimi nawe tunahitaji kitu ili kufanya kitu. But because God is God the creator, lakini kwa kuwa Mungu ni Mungu muumbaji, so, uh, 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 he can make something out of nothing. Anaweza fanya kuumba kitu kutoka kwa utupu. And when we enter his kingdom, na basi tunapokuja katika ufalme wake, we are also encouraged to imitate him. Ah, uh, inapaswa tukamuige. 
and that you can be able to decree a thing yeah, and can, uh, it can happen in our, in our lives. So be the best prophet for your life. No, no wonder Paul in Philippians 3 verse 13 and 14 say that brothers and sisters anasema wapendwa I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind. And straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal. To win the prize for which God has called me heavenward. In Christ Jesus. So that should be also our determination. We should purpose uh, to forget what is behind us. And move forward knowing that God is with us. Uh, because I have quoted several I like Job 36 verse 5 in the NIV version. Verse, uh, uh, verse 5 and it says that God is mighty but despises no one. He is mighty and firm in his purpose. So God is mighty and he despises no one including you and me. He is mighty and firm in his purpose. And um, uh, as I conclude that point in Proverbs 24 verse 16. Uh, the word of God says that for a righteous man may fall seven times. And rise, uh, and rise again. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. I don't know how many times you have fallen. But for the righteous, they will fall and rise. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. And the final point number three is uh, uh, Mika 7 verse 8. Mika 7 verse 8. Uh, and says that do not rejoice over me my enemy when I fall I will arise when I sit in darkness the Lord will be a right to me so the, here we can see that for the righteous that yes they will fall but they will arise that when I sit in darkness the Lord will be a right to me and when sometimes I found myself passing through very trying times, I have decreed upon people and even decreed upon my, my life, like you know, the beginning of this year, I, I did lose my mother. I like declaring Psalms 112 verse 4. I like it in the NIV version and it says that even in darkness right dwells for the righteous and in verse 7 it says about that man who fears the Lord the righteous that they do not fear bad news because they had, uh, the, the heart is steadfast. Trusting in the Lord. So uh, uh, let, let's uh, avoid that trap of past failures. Because God remains at work in our lives. And the fourth and final point is the pride of of past achievement. Mm -hmm. Kiburi cha ushindi ulio. Uh, uh, pride of past uh, uh, achievement. Uh, kiburi cha ushindi ulio upata. Mbeleni. Uh, friends, we need to know that the battle is not over until God says it's over. Wapendo atapaswa kufahamu kwamba vita havija koma hadi buwana atakaposema. 
what is standard today ambacho ni standard ya kiwango leo will be substandard tomorrow kitakuwa ni cha hali ya chini hapo kesho and looking for example even at uh, the mobile phones that you usually have na kwa mfano tu simu ulio nayo the ones that came initially they were very big with with a very a big antenna aha zilizo tangulia zilikuwa kubwa na yenye rununu but nowadays they are smaller with more capability na leo hii ni ndogo lakini na uwezo zaidi ya zile za kale and even in the east yesterday years na hata miaka iliyopita there were vehicles that were, uh, people knew those were vehicles na kuna magari ambayo watu walifahamu hayo ndio magari in fact it was mercedes ah uh, ilikuwa ni ile gari la mercedes uh, volvo volvos and pujot na gari la pujo but you know that pujot uh, uh, is only recently that now they are trying to come up ah uh, na kufahamu tu ni kwamba ni hivi juzi tu pujo wanajaribu kuunda gari nzuri and like me when i went to unilever na kwangu nilipoenda katika kampuni ya unilever by then managers were being given vehicles ah uh, siku zile manager walipewa magari a manager is just a manager but not senior manager ah uh, kati ya nilikuwa manager lakini sio wa hadhi ya juu who could be given just a mistubishi ransa ungepewa gari la mistubishi ransa but the factory manager or the senior managers lakini manager wa factory ama mkubwa zaidi those who act when the director is away uh, ambapo wanatenda kazi wakati mkurugenzi hayumo they were given pujot walipewa gari la pujo but today pujot when you look at, at what is there uh, tukatazama gari lile la pujo ukitazama na yaliopo sasa it ranks down there Ah uh, ni gari yenye haina hadhi. So use your past achievement as a stepping stone. Basi tumia mata ushindi wako wa kale kama jiwe la kukukweza. And somebody said na mtu akasema that there is no experience which is useless by its own self. Ah uh, mtu akasema kwamba hakuna fa, tajiriba ulio nayo ambayo haina faida katika hali yake uh, uh, because every, uh, every, every, every experience has a reason to offer kwa sababu tajiriba ulio nayo ama uzoevu wa jambo uliopata una uh, uh, funzo kwa maisha yako so the best you can do with your past is, is to, to pick reasons there uh, na basi ambayo unajifunza kutoka mambo ya kale ni kutoa funzo pale and in, it's important to know that what god even the, the means that god used previously na vyema kufahamu kwamba njia ambazo bwana alitumia awali may not be the necess- necessary the one that is going to use in your current situation na ni hakika kwamba bwana si lazima akazitumie kwa hali yako ya sasa because isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9 kwa sababu Isaiah 55 mstari wa 5 na 8 The word of God declares for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Kwa sababu Biblia inasema kwamba kwa maana mawazo yangu mawazo yangu si mawazo yako. Neither are your ways my ways. Ama njia zako njia zangu. Declares the Lord. Atangaza Bwana. They are far as heaven is to earth. Na ni kando ama ni mbali kama bingu na nchi zilivyo. So the Lord will like to continue to do a new thing in our lives. Basi Bwana angetaka kufanya jambo jipya maishani mwako. And in Psalms 92 verse 12 and, and 14. Na katika Zaburi 50 uh, 92:14 hadi 15. Uh, the scripture says that the righteous shall prosper like a palm tree. Ah uh, inasema kwamba ka wane haki watafauru kama mielezi. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Watakuwa kama sida pale Lebanoni. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Walio pandwa katika nyumba ya Bwana watafauru ama watatunukiwa kama katika uh, sehemu yake Bwana. They shall still bear fruit in old age. Ah uh, watatoa mazao hata katika ziku za uzee wao. They shall be fresh and pro, uh, prospering. Watakuwa ni mara na wataweza kufanikiwa. And that's like what the word of God declares in Jeremiah 17 verse 8 to 8 uh, 7 to 8. Na na hivyo ndivyo neno la Bwana linatangaza katika Yeremia 17. That blessed is the man. Anasema kwamba kubarikiwa ni yule mtu. That trust in the Lord. Anayeweka tumaini lake ndani ya Bwana. That makes him his hope and confidence. Anayemfanya tumaini lake na ujasiri wake. That he will be like that tree planted on the river side. Kwamba atakuwa kama mti uliopandwa kando kando ya chemichemi. With its root down in the waters. Um, mizizi yake ikiwa ndani kwenye maji it, uh, does not dry even when there is fear drought na hata nyauka hata kukiwa na kiangazi its leaves are always green na majani yake atakuwa mabichi and bears fruits na itazaa mazao in its season kwa wakati wake 
may we be like that tree hebu tuwe kama ule mti planted along the river side ambao umepandwa kando kando ya mto ama chemi chemi and i know a lot of people like this wimbo mnyunyizi ah na tunapenda huo wimbo wa mnyunyizi wangu yeah it comes from that scripture unatokananga na kile kifungu and one of our uh, ministry fathers na moja wa, wa baba zetu katika huduma that is bishop uh, dr william tumsin ambaye ni daktari william tumsin uh, when he he was stepping down alipokuwa anaondoka kwenye uongozi he made a profound declaration alifanya tangazo la kindani he said that uh, i'm stepping down akasema mimi na acha kuwa kiongozi wa kanisa and he said you, you need to mark this na akasema inabidi mfahamu haya that i'm not retiring kwamba mimi si kwamba nimestawi but i'm being refired lakini kwamba ninafanywa upya and in fact true to his word na hakika kwa maneno yake he has been a great blessing to many ministries in this in this nation and outside the uh, the nation amekuwa baraka kwa huduma nyingi katika taifa letu and i have seen him sometimes minister na nimemuona nyakati nyingine akihudumu that the anointing of the lord comes upon him kwamba upako wa bwana unashuka juu yake that sometimes he has even to be held ah, wak- as his ministering aha kwamba wakati mwingine inabidi ashikwe anapohudumu because when the power of god uh, overshadows him kwa sababu nguvu za bwana zinapomjiria so those words came true for him aha hayo maneno yakawa kweli kwake isaiah 48 verse 17 declares ah isaiah 48 mstari wa 17 yatangaza that says the lord your redeemer ah haya sema bwana mkombozi wako the whole one of israel ah mtakatifu wa israel i'm the lord your god na mungu bwana wako who teaches you to profit anaye kufunza ama mimi ndiye bwana mungu wako anaye kuwezesha kufanikiwa who reads you by the way you should go anaye kuongoza kanye njia upasoayo kuenenda and in psalms that that 2 verse 8 na katika zaburi 32 mstari wa 8 the word of god declares that i will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go bibi inatangaza kwamba nitakuelekeza na nitakuongoza kwa njia upasayo kwenda i'll counsel you with my loving eye upon you nitakushauri kwa jicho langu likiwa juu yako so we should not uh, dwell on our past achievements basi ya paswa tusidumu katika ushindi wa awali but we need to allow the lord to teach and instruct us lakini inabidi ama inapaswa tumwachilie bwana atuongoze na atufunze and to continue to counsel us with his loving eye upon us na azidi kutshauri na jicho lake la upendo likiwa juu yetu because one thing brethren i can tell you is that when the lord holds your hand ah kitu cha hakika wapendo kuambia ni kwamba bwana anapowashika kushika mkono the shame will never be your portion aibu haitakuwa sehemu yako And me I usually say my favorite uh, verse in the scripture is Psalms 34 verse 5. Na mimi huwa nasema kwamba kifungu changu cha kupendeza ni dhara za Zaburi 34 mstari wa 5. That those that look unto the Lord are radiant. Kwamba wa mtazamao bwana wa huangaa. Their faces are never covered with shame. Ah nyuzo zao haizitafunikwa na aibu. Yeah let's see uh, NIV as I conclude. NIV NIV tafsiri. Yes. Those who look to, uh, to him are radiant. Wanao mtazama wataangaa. Their faces are never covered with shame. Na nyuzo zao hazitafunikwa kwa aibu. So as I conclude, ninapomalizia. Even as we continue this week, hata unapoendelea na juma hili. Let's know that yes we are supposed to live a victorious life. Na tufahamu kwamba tunapaswa kuishi maisha ya ushindi. But there are bottlenecks or obstacles. Kunazo vizuizi that may hinder us not to achieve that which god has desired for us ambavyo vinaweza tuzuia tusiingie ama tusifanikiwe kwa kile ambacho bwana anachokwenda number one we saw is that entertaining sin ni ile ya kufurahia dhambi because ya this, this leads to separation from god to sa- sababu inaleta sa- kutengwa kutengana kutenganishwa na mungu and our fellowship is broken na ushirika wetu unavunjika And maybe you are here this morning. Na inawezekana uko hapa asubuhi ya leo. And do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Haumfahamu Bwana kama mokozi wa maisha yako. Today you can make a bold step. Leo unaweza fanya uamuzi kamili. By saying yes to Jesus. Kwa kusema ndio kwake Yesu. Because Jesus paid the, 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 the price of our sins. Kwa sababu Yesu alilipa dhawabu ya dhambi zetu. 
and today you can receive him as lord and savior of your life unaweza mpokea kama bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yako and from this day you can start confessing that you are the righteous of god na kutoka leo unaanza akili kwamba wewe ni mtakatifu wa bwana not because of anything you have done si kwa sababu ya chochote ulichofanya but because of the finished work of jesus lakini kwa sababu ya kazi timilifu yake bwana uh, the, the second the, the other trap we saw is accepting uh, accepting status quo ya pili tukaona ni kule kukubali hali uliyo and we we, we 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 need to remember that our god changes not to paswa kukumbuka kwamba bwana wetu habadiliki but he take he specializes in lifting us from one level of glory to another lakini hali yake ni kwamba yeye ufanya kazi ya kututoa sehemu moja hadi nyingine and number three we are seen is a trap of past failures na ya tatu ni ile ya kutegwa na mambo ya ushindi wa kale we need to remember that our god remains the great i am tupaswa kufahamu kukumbuka kwamba Bongo ndiye Mungu nilie not the god i was si Mungu aliye or the god i will be ama Mungu atakaye so even in your situation today hata basi katika hali yako leo he remains the great i am anabaki Mungu mkuu those that uh, desire hearings uh, wanaotamani uponyaji he remains god your healer atabaki kuwa Mungu mponya those that require a provision he remains god your provider ah uh, wanao tafuta upeanaji bwana atakuwa mpaji wako in your various situation he remains the great i am ah uh, katika hali zote anabaki aliye Mungu nilie maybe the situation is so dire ah uh, inawezekana hali ni mbaya but remember that our god is god the creator lakini kumbuka Mungu wetu ni Mungu muumba he can make something out of nothing anaweza fanya kitu kutokana na utupu and finally na mwishowe is pride of past achievements na uh, kibuli cha ushindi wa kale we need to use uh, we need to use our past achievements as stepping stepping stones for advancement na uh, tupaswa kutumia ushindi wetu kama jiwe ya kutukweza kwenda mahali tuendako as we continually allow god to lead us tunapozidi kumruhusu bwana atuongoze so as i am say i was saying this day na basi nikiwa ninasema haya that today you can allow jesus kwamba leo unaweza mfanya kuruhusu yesu to be the lord and savior of, of your life awe bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yako ah uh, you need to allow him to take full control of your life and your situation umruhusu achukue usukani wa maisha na hali zako because he remains a good shepherd kwa sababu anabaki mchunga mwema and this is the song that was coming uh, was coming in my mind na huu wimbo ndio ulikuwa unaingia mawazoni mwangu that shepherd of my heart i give you full control wherever you lead me i will fall so this day basi siku ya leo is he your shepherd je ni ni mchunga wako he can be your shepherd this day anaweza kuwa mchunga wako leo even as you allow him to be the lord and savior of your life hata unapomruhusu kuwa bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yako and we can be able to assist you na anaweza kukusaidia in making a short prayer kwa kufanya ombi fupi so are you there down here upstairs in the all in the balcony je uko pale juu chini kwenye hema ama kwenye balcony Yeah, you can lift up your hand. Unaweza nyosha mkono wako. It doesn't matter what you have done in your life. Ah, uh, haijarishi uliyofanya maishani. But Jesus uh, uh, loves you so much. Lakini Yesu anakupenda sana. That's why God so loved the world. Na ndipo sa Bwana Mungu akampenda ulimwengu. That he gave his only begotten son. Kwamba akamtoa mwanawe wa pekee. That whosoever ili yeyote believes in him. Atakaye muamini. Uh, 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 may receive may, may receive him uh, uh, you will be born again uh, pate uzima so you are among the whosoever basi wewe ukati ya yeyote i may not know your name yawezekana nisijue jina lako but you are in that category of whosoever believes in him lakini uko katika hiyo hali ya mtu yeyote shall not perish but have everlasting life asiangamie mbali yawe na uzima wa milele so uh, again anyone outside there up there you can stand up or you just lift your hand je yeah, kuna yote pale nje nyosha mkono wako and we read you to christ na tutakuongoza kumjua yesu and from this day is going to give you a new song a na, song of victory kutoka leo watakupa wimbo mpya wimbo wa ushindi but even after this lakini hata baada ya hayo you can see uh, the, uh, the the ushers or, or the readers who are here and the pastors utaona viongozi wanashamanzi ama viongozi walio mbele and that will be good na itakuwa vyema for those who already are born again kwa walio tayari okoka let's remember to, to, uh, to remain connected tukumbuke kubaki kama tumejiunganisha 
and be connected. Na ubaki ukua umeunganika. As we desire that the Holy Spirit of God will continue to be our teacher. Hata unapo tamani kwamba roho mtakatifu atazidi kuwa mwalimu. And we need to, uh, to, uh, to uh, we, we need to avoid those four obstacles. Na tupaswa kuepukana na vizuizi vile vile. To the glory of God. Kwa utukufu wake bwana. Uh, you can stand up even as I make the final prayer. Naweza simama tuombe. Our Father and our God in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba yetu na Mungu wetu katika jina kuu la Yesu. Thank you Jehovah God for your word. Tukushukuru Bwana kwa neno lako. Which is living, powerful and refreshing. Ambalo laishi la dumu na ni la sasa. And Lord it has refreshed us king of glory. Bwana limetuhuisha asubuhi hii. I pray that Lord there will be change and transformation Lord in our lives. Naomba Bwana kutakuwa na mabadiliko maishani mwetu. Even as we apply the truth Lord in your word. Hata tunapotendeza kazi ukweli wa neno lako. That Lord will not be people who entertain sin. Kwamba Bwana hatutakuwa watu watakao furahia dhambi. Because we know that we are holy, holy. Kwa sababu tunafahamu wewe ni mtakatifu. And you desire us to be holy king of glory. Na tuwe watakatifu. That every time Jehovah God will look at the cross of Jesus. Kwamba kila tunapotazama msalaba wa Yesu. Where we receive our victory. Tunapopokea ushindi wetu. That will not be satisfied with the status quo. Kwamba hatutatoshereka na hali tulio. Because Lord you are a progressive God. Kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu mwendelezi. That will not uh, be, uh, will not be f- fall in the trap of uh, past failures. Na tutabaki katika mtego wa ushinda kushindwa kwa kale. Because King of Glory we know. Kwa sababu Bwana tunajua. That Lord you are at work Lord in our lives. Kwamba Bwana watenda kazi maishani mwetu. And that heavenly Father Lord will not uh, will not uh, fall in uh, remain Lord in our past uh, uh, past um, past victories king Na, of glory kwamba bwana hatutabaki katika ushindi wetu wa awali because lord you are doing a new thing king of glory kwa sababu bwana wafanya jambo jipya lord even as we begin a new week king of glory bwana hata tunapoanza juma mpya continue to cause us to continue to look unto you king of glory uwezeshe kuzidi kukutazama because them that look unto you lord are radiant kwa sababu wakutazamao bwana wanaanga their faces are never covered with shame nyuzo zao hazitaibika Continue to give us new songs Lord of victories. Zidi kutupa wimbo mpya Bwana. And them that Lord even came to your house King of Glory lifting their faith to you for different situation King of Glory. Bwana walioingia kwa nyumba yako wakinua imani zao kwa hali tofauti. I pray Jehovah God that Lord you remember Lord and visit with them in a special way. Naomba ukakumbuke na kuwatembelea kwa njia special. That them that are sick Lord you receive their healing in the name of Jesus. Kwamba walio wagonjwa watapokea uponyaji kwa jina la Yesu. Those that are bound will be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Waliofungwa wataachiliwa katika jina kuu la Yesu. Lord continue to be glorified and exalted kutukuka na kuheshimika because you are god and there is none like you kwa sababu wewe ni mungu na hamna mwingine kando in jesus name we pray katika jina la yesu tu amen amen